and say, let nothing hinder you from worship today. You're here in the presence of the Lord. So whatever you need, God, come on, help me talk to each other. Tell somebody, whatever you need, God's got it. Come on, tell again, whatever you need, God's got it. And in God's presence is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. I want you to look at them in the face, grab them by the hand, and say, may I pray for you right now. My God, can we take the occasion to come into the presence of the Lord and lift up one another? Come on, let's begin to pray right now. You may not know the needs, you may not know the concern, you may not know the burden that's on the heart of your brother and your sister, but we are a church that believes in the power of prayer. We believe in the power of God to tear down the works of the enemy, to destroy the work of the devil, and to bring victory to our lives. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, thank you for my brother, my sister. Lord, we are here in your presence. Lord, you promised that when two or three are gathered together in your name, touching and agreeing on the same thing, you promised to be in our midst. Lord, as a congregation, Lord God, we pray in the name of Jesus. First of all, that you be glorified with our worship. Be glorified with our praise. Be glorified, Lord God, in the midst of your people. Let no flesh glory in your sight. Let us not focus on our problem, but focus on the problem solver. Let us not elevate the situation, but let the situation know that I'm going to elevate my God. Lord, show yourself strong. Be glorified. Take us where you want us to go. Give us what you want us to have. And Lord God, touch everybody under the sound of my voice. As we intercede for our brother and our sister, some have family members that are in peril. Some have children that have waylaid their lives. Some have parents that have walked out of your will. Some have family members that are ill or debilitated. Some of us got financial challenges. Some of us have job challenges. Lord, you know, not only in this sanctuary, but those that are tuned in by Periscope, you know every need. Lord God, you are the God that meets every need. You hear every prayer. Lord, we submit our needs to you. We cast down the powers of darkness. We declare, Lord, that we are victorious over the powers of the enemy. We do not contribute to the enemy's plan. Lord God, we submit ourselves to you. We resist the devil and he flees from us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we declare that the enemy has said it not. We declare that we have the keys of victory over every opposition in life. And we declare that the Lord God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all. We can ask the faith. So Lord, have your way. 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 Come on, somebody help me. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. In my brother's situation. In my sister's situation. In my own situation. Have your way. And let your glory rest upon us. Lord God, we thank you. We honor you. We praise and adore you that every oppressive spirit is put in its place. Every demonic opposition is set in notice. You will not win in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for the breakthrough. You are the Parazim, the Lord of the breakthrough. You are the awesome God and the mighty God. And we give you glory for the change for our situation, for the better. That we lose hands, God. And we praise you, Father, for the impending victory, for the victory we anticipate. We open our mouths and we give you great glory. Lord, we love you, we believe you, we trust in you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Can you give God glory like this? You just give the victory. Lord, we declare right now that our ears are attentive, our hearts 
open. Your name is worthy of praise and we give it all to you. Now take us where we need to go. Give us what we need to have. And Lord, you speak your word and all flesh will be subject to your word. Happy way. Whether it's on the level of our young children or it's on the level of us adults. Lord, let your glory fill this house and you get the glory we pray in Jesus' name. Everybody shout glory to God. Glory to God is everybody and help me as you sound alive and declare, Lord, I thank you that I have a Bible that is my personal copy of basic instruction before leaving earth. I am a believer, not a doubter. I'm not just a hearer, but I'm also a doer. And my life is so much better because of the word of a living God. Therefore, I declare my mind is alert. Therefore, I declare my mind is alert. Therefore, I declare my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. There is nothing else more important than the word right now. There is nothing else more important than the word right now. There is nothing else. I'm going to say it to y'all. Say it with me and agree. There is nothing else more important than your word right now. There is nothing else more important than your word right now. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will not be distracted, but I will hear the word. And as a result of what I hear today, somebody shout, I'm going to leave it out. Better than I came here in Jesus' name. Give God praise, somebody. I know I got more than two people in here. Let's give God praise, somebody. I'm not pleasing. I just know God deserves so much better. Who's going to help me give him so much better? Hallelujah. While you're standing up, you can turn your Bibles with me. In the name of the Lord, to the book of Acts, the book of Acts, amen. I, I want to read uh, with you, and I want us to read together this text as the young adults are dismissed for their worship. Thank you all for filling in when they leave out. It is so good to see you all today in great church. Like it was is, I look forward to seeing all of you when I do. You all are such a blessed congregation, and I love you so much. Acts chapter 1. Go look at verse 5 through 8, Acts chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. That's smile with somebody. Let them know God is faithful. Yes, I am. God is awesome. I'm still like smiling. I don't know if you if you step on each other's foot when you sat in your row now. Let's smile with somebody. Help us. Amen. Amen. Help me say something one time so it won't make it look like the child is mad at somebody stepping on your foot. Amen. Acts chapter 1, verse 5. Amen. I, I want to talk to you about the fact that we have in this day two very important entities that they got to talk about. Two entities. Somebody say two. <laughs> two entities that we have to, today. And we got to acknowledge these entities in regards to the work of the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about for seven weeks now the work of the Holy Spirit. It is my prayer that we begin to see people filled with the Holy Spirit. Lord said, preach your son until you see manifestation in the lives of the people. That's why I, 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 I don't want you to get tired of hearing the Holy Spirit, but I want you to really start understanding the work of the Holy Spirit. I need my doorkeepers to understand the work of the Holy Spirit. I need the singers to understand the work of the Holy Spirit. I need everybody that has breath to understand the work of the Holy Spirit. The Lord wants to fill you with his spirit. I've come to understand the only way to have the best quality of life yes. is to be full of the Holy Ghost. That's right. I have That's two right. witnesses. That's right. Those that have received the Holy Ghost, can you help me and declare with me an amen if you agree that the best way to have good quality of life is to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Yes. Amen. All right, all right. That's much better. Amen. We'll see if you really mean it. But I got to talk about these two entities that we acknowledge in regards to the work of the Holy Ghost because, beloved, it relates to the power, the ability, and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The power, the ability, and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in our lives. There's an entity before you take your seats called potential. 
that all of us have. Look at somebody and say, you're full of potential. Come on, say it nice. I'm happy to say, you're full of potential. There's really nothing that can hold you back in your life because you're full of potential. But there's also the entity of not just potential, but there's also the entity of production. Amen. Production. All right? Potential deals with what could be. Production deals with what is being. I want to know if today you understand that there's a difference between the two. And while both are great, one is more real. So both are relevant, but one should be sought after more than the other. So let's give it our attention to Acts chapter 1, verse 5 and 8, and you can have your seats after this. Let's read together. Ready? Read. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were coming together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive. But ye shall receive. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Beloved, I want you to join me as we talk today from the topic Power to Live Your Best Life. Power to Live Your Best Life. Say to somebody, there's power to live your best life. Now pray with me this morning. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. I love you so much. Thank you for hearing the word of the Lord. But on our, it's from this text that we find that just like today, these disciples had agendas and they also had uh, priorities. And, and while the 12 disciples, Marcus 1 at this point, but Judas at by this time hung himself out of shame for uh, Dion, how he betrayed Jesus. So there were 11 disciples. There were their families, other followers. Look at somebody and say, we can safely assume. Can safely assume. No, 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 I need y'all to get this, and I want you to grab context. We can safely assume that Peter's wife was now walking with him. We can safely assume that Bartimaeus was probably among the number. We can safely assume the brother that we talked about last week, Zacchaeus, perhaps was walking with Jesus at this time. We can perhaps talk about Nicodemus was perhaps walking with Jesus at this time. And we can safely assume these things. But just to be on the moderate side, let us just say there were 11 stable lives that are walking with Jesus. Now, you can have what y'all focus on what I'm saying. You can have a large group walking with Jesus, you can have a small group walking, but it doesn't matter about the group, what matters about you. And I want you to understand that as we look at this text, that they all, maybe by individual consent or by prior discussion, they all wanted to know, all right, Jesus, you came, we saw healing, we saw deliverance, we saw a breakthrough, we saw blind eyes open, we saw deaf ears unclogged, we saw dumb tongues, uh, dumb tongues talk, Lord God, we saw rain walk, we saw you raise at least three people from the dead, we saw you do mighty things. Now, what? And you see from the text, they ask Jesus a question. Will you now restore the kingdom back to Israel? Will you now allow for Israel to have our land back? To have our power back? And they ask Jesus a question. Therefore we see his answer. He answered and said to him, it is not for you to worry about the seasons or the times that I have in my own authority. Look at somebody and say that was God's business. Oh, 
work with me this morning. Jesus was reminding them that what was going to happen now was God's business. But I want you to have the focus on what's really most important. He said that you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and he is God's agenda. And you shall be my witnesses. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, it's time for us to be witnesses. So we all know anybody been alive any uh, length of time. You've seen Matlock, you've seen Dragnet, you've seen Ironside. My God, you saw, I don't know what the other court shows are, but all of us know what a witness is. Somebody was seen, somebody was heard, not this hearsay, not this third hand stuff. You cannot by law convict somebody by hearsay. This is not a political statement, it's the truth. If somebody said, I heard Charlie Carrington stole Bubba Gump, they would throw that right out because the judge would ask if the judges were consulted, did you see it? Yes. What is the evidence that he stole the Bubba Gump? Well, I don't know. I heard he stole Bubba Gump. I heard that he took the nominators out the stall. The judge would say, that's what? Hearsay. Hearsay. But a witness is somebody who once saw it. Heard it. Witnessed it by way of their own experience. Jesus said, look at here, you shall be witnesses unto me. So, so they begin to say, all right, that must be the agenda of God. And, and, and that's wonderful. But, but then we begin to see, but other than that, that, that didn't stop the Lord. Because at that point, he said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Because to be the type of witness that I can require you to be, you're not going to be able to do it just by your strength alone. To be the type of witness that I've anointed you to be, it's not going to be up to you how you operate. You're going to need more than what you've got. More than what you've seen. More than what you've heard. Oh, I wish I could preach this like I want. But how many of you know, even in our own city, there are folk that witness things, but then for various reasons, they don't say what they saw. Come on. How long did it take? I hate to bring this up until you start with this man of God. I had to bring this up. But the poor dude that lost his life over a chicken sandwich. In Prince George's County, he, I don't know the whole story, but you mean to tell me folk are standing in line. And it took the police almost two weeks to find out who did the stand. Somebody got rooted in line about a Popeye's chicken sandwich. 1,500 milligrams of sodium. <laughs> Fight, folk fighting over 1,500 milligrams of sodium. Look at somebody and say, man, that's this something to fight about. <laughs> the blood pressure shoot up so fast, you better help, 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 help somebody who's right there with you. <laughs> Sam was that good to kill somebody? Another bad situation, Popeyes, they got to do some serious PR because they're catching it off this chicken sandwich. But as a side note, please, this is not a doctrine. You don't mess with God's anointing. <laughs> Try to compete with Chick fil A. Close on Sunday. Amen. <laughs> oh God, but it's obvious something wrong when you try to fight against it to see y'all. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but but understand, understand, understand. My God, there were witnesses who saw everything. But then when the police begin to question, oh, you know what we all would say. I don't know, I was on the phone. <laughs> Usually when somebody fights, somebody picks up and goes live with that fight, you know. But I didn't see no live footage. Then there was a dude that worked behind the counter and a woman of another color called him an N-word, a ninja. And you can imagine what that is. And, uh, and he got so upset, he went behind the woman who was of another color, picked up and busted her, broke a couple of ribs because she called him a ninja. He was an employee of But hardly nobody saw a thing. Ooh. Although they saw it. Oh. They had their own agenda and refused to be a witness. witness. 
Now, folk have many reasons not to be witnesses of day. I don't want to get involved. I don't want nobody coming after me. Witnesses get bumped off. The police promise you they're going to keep your name secret. But then the detectives, we come to your door to question you. So I don't want to be a witness. I don't want to be dead. I, I, I believe in no submission policy. So let's call it to the church. I've seen what God can do. I've heard what God can do. I know what God can do. But I don't want to get involved. You know, people start talking about you when you come across as a witness. People start labeling you when you talk in that Jesus talk. People start messing around and saying stuff about you when you start handing out flyers and pamphlets. You know, I don't want that kind of pressure. I just got to work on me and mine. So I'm not going to be a witness. Talk quiet because you're listening to this one. So grab a name about a hand and say, we all have agendas. So don't think wrong of the disciples. But let's change the trend. And accept God's agenda. I want you to tell one more neighbor, you have potential. Look across the church and y'all can see it now and tell somebody you get your eye contact with. You have potential. Is a wonderful thing. Yes, it is. Can I know it is? Yeah. It gives basis for hoping for a positive outcome. Somebody say it again, potential. Potential. For example, everybody has probably been through this one, all right? You got a good job, come back, you got a great job. You, 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 you smile good and all that stuff, so you smile good, amen, and, and all your, amen, uh, 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 you all smile good, Jim, you smile good, uh, all of y'all smile good, y'all, y'all do okay. You go to an interview to buy a home, all right, and, and they begin to question you and ask you for finances, for work history, of course they check your credit, and all the boxes are checked, right, all the boxes are checked, but sight of seen, they give you John Tay a mortgage, and based on your potential to repay it, how much you make, what your credit history is, how much you want to put down, they use that as potential by what? To give you a loan for a house. Anybody ever had the joy of settling on your own house, getting the keys to your own house? I got some of y'all that's in there looking at me shaking your head. Yeah. How many know that while it's a bill you got to pay, it's yours? Yes, that's right. <laughs> your grace. Yes. Your leaky sick. Yes. 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 Your toilet need to be changed. Yes. But the bottom line is mine. Yes. My yes. equity. Yes. Yes. Come on. My address. Come on. Yes. Come on now. Amen. Somebody say thank God for home ownership. Thank God for home ownership. But they gave you that mortgage because you had what? Potential. Oh, thank you. Right. Yes. Yo, watch Robert's <laughs> She has potential. But let's, I'm serious. You, you look at that, that's a wonderful thing because your, your, your income, your, your, your work history, it, it, it all went to the potential for someone to trust you for the next 30 years, in some cases 15 years, to pay a mortgage for your home. Amen. Yeah. Anybody ever experienced this? You go to a job in the Smiling best suit, smelling nice, <laughs> teeth clean. Everything about you, right? You have a degree or qualifications for the job. They check your past references. Yeah. And then they bring you in to interview. Some cases call you back. Some cases have four or five people in the interview. Have you sit before a board or a panel? And then because of the potential that you demonstrate, they what? They give you the job. Somebody say thank God for the job. Yeah. Anybody ever experienced that? Yeah. Anybody ever been interviewed before? Anybody ever been hired before? You have a reason to thank God that somebody saw you or potential. So can we go deep? Well, there are no guarantees because you know you can have all the good credit, you can have all the good work history, you can have all Everything. But how many know that potential alone doesn't pay the mortgage? That's right, amen. Dante 
things happen. You can get fired, hopefully not, laid off, your company can close, there goes your income. So all the trust that that mortgage company put in you, my God, is way late if you don't have the ability to pay your mortgage. All the job that interviewed you and saw you a nice candidate, smiled at everybody, answered the right questions, but one day you go on the job and Joe Blow tick you off. If you weren't ready for that, if you bounce Joe Blow out the window, my God, and you crash up through the glass, and then they look at you call a security and give you a box to pack your stuff. All that protection. So can somebody help me preach and say, potential alone doesn't cut it. Doesn't cut it. Oh. I'm going to be able to look for somebody. Fathers, where you at? Fathers, can y'all say something? Can Thank you. One father in the house. <laughs> Young man, come to your door. Can I see your door? So let's read. 
read the text this way in, in John 1. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, gave he no potential. Potential. Exclusion. To become sons of God. Look at somebody say, you have potential. Alright, alright. That's a reason to praise God right there. You don't praise God for that. I have potential to be a son of God. Oh God, I gave him potential. But then we go to John's gospel, and we look at John's gospel and say, but I can't do by the law. So let's go back to Acts chapter 1 and understand the Bible says you shall receive power. In this context, the word power is the word dunamis. It is a word that be I, I, I'm not a Bible scholar. I don't know all this stuff. That's why you need to hear what I'm saying. You don't trust I'm telling you the truth. If you go back and study this, the Bible was written in Koine Greek. Some of the New Testament may have been written in Hebrew. But I need y'all to catch this. There are word contexts. Just like if you said go there, or there is, or it is their dog. How many know if I say go there, it is T-H-E-R-E. It's talking about location. But if I say it is their dog, T-H-E-I-R, that means ownership. The words sound the same, but different meaning. Oh, y'all come on, y'all English knowledge. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. So it is the same understanding when we read the scripture. You shall receive potential after the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses. Well, God, no. You shall receive dunamis. Yeah. What does the word dunamis mean? The word dunamis, it means exactly as it sounds. Explosive action. We get the word dynamite from the word dunamis. Oh my God, you see where we're going with this? My God, dynamite blows up something. Dynamite has explosive effects. So let's manage it out and let's begin to praise God. Would you rather have potential or would you rather be dynamite? Oh, see, some of y'all got to say, I got my answer. Because some of y'all say, I don't want to blow nothing up. I don't want to make no waves. My God, you will not sit here in this earth. My God, let me, let me go deeper. Jesus did not take nails in his hands. Nails in his feet. Whipped with a cat and nine tails. Hit upside the head. Spit in the face. Die on the cross. Rise from the dead. Just so you can have potential alone. Amen. Let's also talk chronological context. John 1 was stated by Jesus before his death. Burial and resurrection. My God, beloved, that's what John wrote in John chapter 1. But you notice he taught potential before the life, death, burial, and resurrection came to completion. But then after the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus became a complete act, now he's talking dynamite. Before the life, death, burial, and resurrection, we had potential. But after the life, death, burial, and resurrection, we have explosive power. How can I, in good conscience, let the Lord of my life, who died for me, bled for me, suffered for me, just get potential out of me? I owe him all than just being somebody with potential. No, no, no. It's got to mean something to you. Because, beloved, he came and paid the sacrifice so I can have better quality of life. I am wasting time. Oh, can I just stop playing? I don't have a lot of time to play with this. I got to get to the nitty gritty. But somebody need the Holy Ghost. Too many of us are just satisfied with being potentials. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough for me. Oh, God, help me, 
experiences. It's enough for me just to come to church. It's enough just for me to be a good Sunday going Christian. It's enough for me just to let the devil do what he do. And I say the devil is busy. It's enough for me to ask somebody to pray for me and me to be dependent on other people instead of me being the prayer, instead of the prayee, for me to have victory in my life. I have to understand that Jesus didn't just die for somebody to serve me. He died for me to be able to serve somebody else. But I can't do it without power. I can't. What I do only has this kind of shelf life that human existence can bring. I need more than Attention. I'm preaching better. Y'all say amen, but I'm going to preach through this. I, I got to tell you, we got to know there's a distinct difference between exousia. That sounds so deep. Oh, I have exousia from the Holy Ghost. I, I got exousia. Oh, my God. But how many do you know? Don't look at your neighbor. Don't look at yourself. Just how many do you know that have died full of potential? Grab a nigga by the hand and say, this is unfortunate. This is unfortunate. But the graveyard, but the graveyard is full of potential. Is full of potential. Somebody had to kill for kids. <laughs> but they decided to act a fool in school. Because this is what I got to get y'all to see. I'm going to preach this in a little bit. Everything you are or will ever be has already been accomplished in Christ. But he sets us in time to live it out. In eternity, you're already who God called you to be. He sees you through the eyes of eternity. But he sets us in time to live it out. Some people let potential alone be the end of their story. And never live out the actuality of becoming what they've been called to be. So the graveyard is full of potential. Young boys die, maybe the next Beethoven is six feet under. Yeah. Amen. Maybe, maybe the next, the next inventor of some great scientific discovery because of the choice to just live on potential alone. Maybe that discovery will never be brought forth by them. Maybe let's go pertinent to you. Somebody in your family may never hear about Christ because you satisfy being one of them instead of being someone that can bring them to be one of you. Right. I'm sorry if I don't have to offend you, but here you come. Some of us are so interested in being pleasing to our homies and our family and you got what they need beyond a good laugh. Beyond a drinking buddy, beyond somebody to go to the club to and give them five dollars so they can put singles in the drawers of the street. There's more to you than that stuff. But yeah, you want to be cool with people. And the Lord has exposed you to his spirit so they can now be cool with God. And while you're wasting God's gift trying to be cool with people, your people are not cool with God. And I got to tell the truth. You see, we don't preach like this no more. There are terms like this. I don't want nobody else's blood on my hand. Anybody remember that? Yeah. I, 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 remember, I remember the old folk used to say this kind of stuff, and it scared me. It, it, you know, one time, somebody said a long time ago. Long time ago. I'm not preaching harder, y'all just believe me. You're not. <laughs> one day, I actually, I actually saw somebody's blood. I mean, they weren't literally on my hand. But I think my mother or my grandmother may have said that. You know, Charlie, you better get your life together because I was a bad boy. Charlie, you better get some life, you better get your life together because you can cause there to be blood on your hands for somebody else's life. And I literally looked down as a young man getting in trouble and saw blood, congealed blood on my hands. See, y'all think God playing with us, right? He wasn't playing with me. 
I was in sin, but I had a call in my life. I was messed up because I chose to be. But God wouldn't let me rest. See, I saw ghosts come in my room, hold tombstones in front of my bed, and tell me if I don't get myself together, I'm not going to live, and this is going to be the end of my life. See, that's the kind of stuff I saw. God literally scared the hell out of me. My God. And that's not the only thing that led me to Christ. But beloved, there had to be a hunger that developed in me because I had potential. But there was something on the inside that let me know that I could not be anything I needed to be without the Holy Ghost. Some of y'all too quiet to me, but that's all right. Because beloved, I'm trying to get you to understand that we can live any longer trying to make people cool with us. We got to live dedicated to cause people to be cool with God. Yeah. Yeah. How many of y'all know somebody with potential? Yeah. <laughs> Can I get deeper? Some of y'all have great potential to lead many people to Christ. Yeah. You know a whole bunch of people. Just hug <laughs> somebody and say, he talking about you. <laughs> he talking about you. <laughs> he influenced, you got influence. I mean, they follow what you say. You say, let's go to this club. They are, I mean, they can be disputed before you speak. They can be beefing, but when you talk, they all follow you. Amen. One of those things is I want to see Harriet. I want to see Barry. I want to see Darian. I want to see whoever. And you speak one word. I want to see Spider Man. <laughs> then you look behind you, everybody went. I want to see Spider Man. Look at your neighbor and say, you are an influence. You are an influence. Now I know that may seem heavy on some of y'all. But some of y'all are being irresponsible with your influence. That's right. Amen. Because you're trying to lead them to what they want to do. Instead of leading them to what God wants to do. And you might not cool with that. But that's not what God called you to do. Man. It's already manifested. Don't turn me off. It's already manifested in how much influence you have. Because without the Holy Ghost, a lot of people follow you. Man. Without the Holy Ghost, you're able to talk for out of stuff. How much more can you do with the Holy Ghost? How much more could you be an influencer for God's agenda? If you just decide, I don't want to live by potential. Excuse me. I want to live by dynamite. Yes. Amen. Mm. You got it. Here it is. Here it is. Somebody say, here we go. Don't say, no, I don't keep on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you preach it, man. You preach it, man. You preach it. God gave us both potential and dynamite. But it was not his intent that we be satisfied with potential. Potential is what whets the appetite to make you see, is there more after this? Power is what satisfies your curiosity. Amen. Oh, I'm going to say that again. I got two amens over here. Okay. How many ever saw a color you liked? Who? A car you liked. C A R. Four doors. Four tires. Can y'all hear me? Amen. Is this my go right? Can y'all hear me? Alright. How many ever went to test drive a car you like? Although you knew you couldn't afford it, you still broke. Amen. Amen. Can I share my quick testimony? Quick, real quick. Y'all know I like a Porsche. Panamera. Panamera, okay. One day I was driving and I passed a Porsche parking lot. Porsche car yet. I said, I got a half an hour. I like to get in a meeting until a certain time. Let me just spend some time, see why I like this car so much. So I went in there and said, sir, I'd like to take a test drive. They saw what I do up there, you know, and, and they looked at it and they looked at me and said, you want to bring a grade? I said, I can talk. So I said, test drive. So he said, all right, sir, I'm going to have your license. Amen. And uh, let me go back here, bring your license, make sure we're good, and we're going to go out and test drive. All right, he came back, all smiling, everything. He said, let's go. He pulled it out the space, put that devil temporary tag on it, and me and him drove the Panamera. 
He said, let's go to the public. Oh, he shouldn't have said that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He pulled out that Panamera. I drove it up Branson's Town Road. Went to 795. Oh, God, off of Cherry Lane. I made a left from Branson's Town Road to Cherry Lane. Went down to 795. I said, we okay? He said, yeah, you okay? Go ahead and see what she got. He shouldn't have said that. Hallelujah. I drove that Panamera like Bishop Drive with Panamera. And I drove that bad boy down the street. Oh, God, 100 before I knew it. And the cut back said, Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. And I drove how smooth it was. How awesomely powerful that car felt in God. I began to pray. My God, I didn't even ask how much it was. I just wanted to drive it. And after we pulled back up to the lot, and I got out, he said, What you want to do, son? I want to go inside. I said, No, not now. I just wanted to test drive it because I wanted to confirm why I like it so much. I got out of that car. But I said, I know why I like it so much. Oh, I like it, I like it, I like it. <laughs> Look at the price tag $150,000. It wasn't the Panamera 4S, it was the turbo. God had mercy, the turbo. Can somebody say, See, y'all, some of y'all are talking about. My God, I drove the top of the line. Panamera, I fell in love with that thing even more than I loved it before. See, before I like the potential of it, how it looked. I like how I look in it, which represented potential. But I felt more in love with it when I saw its power. Come on, y'all. My God, beloved, my interest peaked off the potential. But I knew I was not misrelated when I felt its power. Some of y'all got to understand, up till now, we just play with God. We see the potential of God. We see our missing hell. I see 
See, God lets us see who we can be. So you can choose to be. The first touchdown I scored playing football, I saw what I could do. I continued to play football because I knew what I could do. And I kept doing it until I couldn't do it no more. Again, I ask you, how many want to live based on what you have potential to do without discovering what you really can do? Can I give y'all some statistics? Y'all go on, y'all okay? Y'all yeah. can serve me with the choir, but I got your attention, so I'm going to keep it. Pop Warner football. Everybody know about Pop Warner, them little boys with the big football helmets? Look like Pop Warner, this one. Helmet bigger than anybody. <laughs> the little boys cracked me up, man. I couldn't coach them. Because why you trying to touch the front lash? Get on they cry. <laughs> oh, what a little oh, My little boy ran back to cry the whole time. I encouraged him, said, keep running. And then I said, keep running. Oh, I too, but he kept running. <laughs> so I'm looking at these little boys. There's about 30,000 in, in, in the late. Summer, 30,000 kids just in the Baltimore area alone come out for Papa. The age groups, you know, Papa on the You know, the kids, the Papa kids, the, 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 the uh, older kids, the unlimited kids, and then the traveling team, you know, 30,000 kids in these programs. But then when you get to high school, it quickly diminishes from about 30,000 to 20. Between JV and varsity football, because everybody don't hold interest. So the little bobbleheads had a whole bunch of potential, but life cuts that number down. By the time you get to high school, there's 30,000 in pop water, now it's 20,000. Oh, but it drops even more drastically when you talk about college. That 20,000 now drops to about 10 to 7,500. Boys that go on and actually keep playing. Do y'all want to talk about the pros? Last number I heard in the NFL, there are only 2,500 players roughly. They make them all the teams. So we started off with 30,000 bobblehead, bobblehead kids. Now we have only 2,500 professionals in the entire country. The 2,500 have exercised more than potential. The 35, 30,000 had potential to become, but for whatever reason they didn't. Now when you're getting paid for this game, only 2,500 got power. Does that make it real to you? I'm talking nationwide. How do you think those 30,000 feeling I could have been if I dedicated myself? Maybe I should have been if I got the right opportunity. Yep. Maybe that wasn't what I was supposed to be going after. I don't know. Life may have switched on them and they wanted someone else to do. But the numbers don't lie. 30,000 now 2,500. 2,500 average drafted in the NFL. The base salary, salary is 600,000 a year for the guy that drives the bench. How many can enjoy? <laughs> How many say that's struggling real hard, but I can make it with 600,000? <laughs> then you got the first round draft choice, average first round of money, rookie contract, about five, seven, about seven hundred, seven million, sorry, excuse me, five, seven million a year, rookie contract, average. How many can struggle with about seven million? How many will struggle real with? Did you know how many people we could bless if we had Y'all, y'all see what I'm trying to say? One got potential. One keeps moving to get the power. I'm trying to build into a home to press beyond mere potential. Because God's got more for you. 
than what you think. You see what you can do. But so many of us in that life keep us from doing it. The same Super Bowl prayerfully that the Ravens were playing. I'm not listening to haters like that. But they got potential to make it about now. I think everybody watching what the Ravens are going to do. Come on, y'all know you are, haters. Y'all so worried about the Ravens. Y'all in our rearview mirror, but we looking forward. Y'all know what the haters are saying right now. I'm just bringing that up. But let's look at the fact that everybody on that team, if they all meet their goal and exercise the power, yeah. it don't matter what the salary is going to be at that time. All of them will have a win. A ring. The coaches will have a ring. The water boy will have a ring. How quality HG will go right around here. <laughs> Some of us are missing out on the fact that I'm looking at what others are doing and I either don't want to pay the price or I think the price is too much. So for me to operate under the power of God, some of us think we're going to put all that together on our own. But God is saying, let me fill your life because it's not about what you can do, it's about what I do for you. Amen. Amen. And as long as you're coming to me based on what you can do, you're at a level of potential. So the text says, you shall receive. Power. I wish I had more than two people say. You shall receive. Power. I wish I had everybody say, I shall receive power. Power. That word again is dunamis. Explosive ability to produce. After the Holy Ghost has come upon me. But I'm going to ask you to discuss this because I told you, I mean, the, my father, the mind, the thinking, Pull the flesh is at the fault position. Even with potential, you will resort to your default position every time. The flesh is opposed to God. It's not God's enemy, but it's opposed to God. The word is enmity. That's how the fault position. But look at here, my God beloved, knowing that we're in a war and the enemy is trying to steal from you, kill you. Destroy you. He don't care about your potential. He's looking at what you become. Can I preach to you now? And that is what threatens him. Not what you do alone threatens him. Somebody need to get the secret. Why is the devil after you? Because he don't want you to become what God has called you to become. Satan sees more in us than we ought to see in ourselves. Can I be a witness to you? If you didn't have potential to destroy his works, he leave you alone. That's not enough now because you're going to try to make you think that I can't arrive to where I need to be. But I need five people to decide I got a vendetta against the enemy. I hate his guts. He has stolen from me, tried to kill me, tried to destroy me. And I heard the Bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. I need to put on the arm of God, help for salvation, breastplate of righteousness, Lord, turn about with truth, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Take up the shield of faith. Take up the sword of the spirit. Put on the cloak of prayer. But without the Holy Ghost, I just look good. But what makes me swing the sword is the Holy Ghost. What makes me put up the shield is the Holy Ghost. What makes the devil run is the Holy Ghost. I can't be satisfied. Just having potential. Come on. Having a uniform and looking clean. We are in war. And the enemy is trying his best to keep you from becoming. He wants you to die full of potential. I'm going to say it on this side because I think y'all got it. He wants you not to be walking out who you are to be. He wants you to fall short. Because all you 
you want is potential. But I need three people to say, I want power. I want power. Uh, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I want power. <laughs> Man, when I got time, other psychologists showing me spots and ask me, what is this? When I got tired of being suspended three times from school, when I got tired of the whoopings that weren't doing nothing, when I got tired of the ghosts coming in my room and showing me stuff about my death, I had to say, God, what in the world is going on? <laughs> Some of y'all may have had worse experiences. Some of you may not have had experience at all. Some of you, God, let you live to hear me say, potential is not enough. Grab a neighbor by hand and say, Satan, Satan. The, enemy the enemy of your soul is trying to cut off what you can become. But the power of the Holy Ghost will make you what you can become. I just want to know who want more than what you got right now. Yeah. Shalanda, so here's the clothes. I'm serious. It's, it's over. I'm, I'm going home. I'm, I, I, I hope y'all got it. I do. But too many of us choose to settle for less. I just want to ask why. Why? Why do we settle for this? Is it fear? Again, it costs too much. It costs too much. I, can't take coming against the devil. You come against him anyway. Yeah. Is it fear? Maybe it's this one. Is it misunderstanding? Man, I, I give God everything. He gonna take everything. And I ain't got nothing left. <laughs> that ain't true. <laughs> Thank you. Is it willingness to hold on to your flesh because it's so, so good? Anybody remember the song? And love in you is wrong. I don't want to be right. I don't want to be right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us like that flesh. Is it this? Is it that you've been deceived into thinking that God requires too much? See, I get that Holy Ghost. And God won't be expecting me to lay hands, beat the devil. Pray for sick folks today. See, I can do it from a distance in church. I can just follow the prayer list and hope they get better. When God said, you shall receive. Anybody want to see hospital wards empty anymore? I'm just asking. Anybody want to see your sick relatives? Because when I look at the Bible, I was so upset. I think that was the hardest thing about when my dad died until I found out he wanted to die. Okay. It was hard. Me, a preacher, a bishop, a called apostle, how can my father die on my watch? I fought myself for weeks. Y'all didn't know I'm a big preacher, but hurting on the inside. Because I took it personally. I let my dad die, 6.48 a.m., May 26, 2019. My fault. It was my fault. I, I'm standing up there blaming myself until I found out he was done. He wanted to leave. He was ready to go. And in that case, I could pray that I'm blue in the face. That is the right of every believer to leave. So y'all gonna sit there and look at me. But I gotta tell my testimony. I'm going through all this self defamation Because I want to see the power of God. I pray for others. Y'all don't sit there looking at me. I pray for others. They got up. I prayed for one woman. Verified a miracle in my life. She had cancer. God, that was yep. stage four chemo, hair loss, all that. Yep. I laid hands on that lady. God healed her. Yep. Amen. Two or three months, she got out that bed, Amen. back in her garden, praying, 
reading the word. I came to stop with y'all. You remember, baby? We went and prayed for her and one laid hands, and the Lord raised her up. But then she found out her husband was doing something he should have been doing for her stepdaughter, molesting her. And then we used that to come back in. She died three weeks later. Praying for somebody who had AIDS once. Full blown. I'm talking about homeboy wasn't long for this world. Laid hands on him and went back to the doctor that week. T cell numbers up. AIDS completely gone. Oh, God. And then he fell back in relationship with the person that turned him out. Dead within two months. Jesus. And I'm questioning myself, Lord, what didn't I do? Because I read your word, right? And your word says you heal all diseases. And I would have stayed in that right question to myself had not God shown me. You do have power. But people got to choose to live it out. But how would they know there's healing available for us to just simply want attention and won't lay hands on the sick and believe in the power of God to heal? Come on, Bishop. Somebody's waiting for you to say, let me pray for you. Yeah. I understand. You won't pray for them if you don't have confidence wow. in the power. Wow. Yeah. But they still need your prayers. Yes. So what, you going to let them die? Or are you going to believe God to heal? Yeah, everybody that get prayed for don't get healed. And a lot of that is because sometimes they want to go. Yeah. Sometimes it's their time. But you never are to believe in the power of God and then doubt because you are trusting him because it's his power. Amen. I dare somebody say, I want his power. So y'all not saying like you want it. I want his power. Because the Bible says in the close, when the Holy Ghost comes, you shall receive. To live a higher quality of life. Power to be able to tell the enemy, this is as far as you come. You come no further. Power to arrest spirits that are attacking your family in the night seasons and those that may be distant from you. Power to cast down strongholds and to declare to the enemy, you shall not win this battle. Power to declare over your own body, I shall not. But live and declare the salvation of the Lord. Power to be able to bring down satanic strongholds. I remember Jesus when he sent down the disciples and he said to go in the regions and declare the kingdom of God. What did they come back to do, Shelley? They came back and said, demons are subject to you. Power and darkness are cast down by you. I just want to know who because you're tired of seeing the enemy have the last say. I have a God who he alone has the last yeah. say. Yeah. Can I correct that? He has the only say. Come on. God have mercy. Come on. He has the only say. The only say. You're talking about greater quality of life, Holy Ghost power. Can overcome depression. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Holy Ghost power can overcome addiction. Yes, yes. Can I get one witness? Holy Ghost power can call down every oppressive demon that's fighting your husband, fighting your wife, fighting your children. How many of you have had enough of just taking it? You ready to dish it out? You ready to get to the place? Where the enemy won't mess with you because he knows he's walking up the wrong tree, fighting the wrong battle. How many are ready to win because of the power of the Holy Spirit? So here it is. I am through.
through with potential. I want that same power. I said I want the same power. I'm tired of playing with this flesh because one day it's going to win. And if it wins, that means I'm dead because the wages of sin is death. Is death. I want to live a better quality of life. I want the Holy Ghost. Eyes are closed, heads are raised. Boy, you preach today. See, you know why I know you preach, Charlie? Because I feel the power of God in this place right now. Shut up, Rossi. Lord, I feel like you will fill whoever has you to fill. Some of us have lost our desire to be filled with the Spirit. We have, we have developed a comfort with status quo. But there's too much to God than to just have potential. Everybody on your feet, come on. Y'all all right? Amen. There's too much to God to just have potential. I'm going to say it again. There's too much to God just to have potential. Somebody lift your hand and say, I know I have exousia. I know I have exousia. Power to become. But I want dunamis. I want dunamis. Explosive power. Give me, Father, Holy Ghost dynamite. Not to make my name great, but to exalt your powerful name. Come on, you begin to pray right now. Lord, fill me. Fill me. Fill me. Okay, I gotta go. I got some house cleaning. God bless you. Lord, fill me. Lord, fill me. Lord, fill me. Come on, you gotta want this thing. Come on, I'm not asking you to be emotional. I'm asking you to be sincere.